Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malzberg. You know, you heard what Secretary Shinseki said yesterday, which is that he's mad as hell, and uh, the president is madder than hell. And uh, I've got the scars to prove it, given the uh, briefings that I've given the president, uh, the conversations that he and Rick and I have had on these matters. And uh, so is one step uh, like this one, as important as it was, uh, sufficient? Uh, we'll continue to work, uh, look at that uh, major, but at the same time that we're looking at accountability, we want to continue to perform to provide our veterans the services that they have earned. Yeah, and you're doing a heck of a job, uh, Brownie, <coughs> to, to coin a phrase. Uh, welcome back, folks, and um, th this is horrific. The reports keep pouring out, and it gets worse and worse, and uh, the president's madder than hell. Then the, then, uh, then, well, I would think then you fire the guy in charge. Uh, but the guy they fired uh, was going to quit in a, in a few weeks anyway, and that's supposed to represent something. Joining us now is the former commissioner of the Social Security Administration under George W. Bush, uh, Michael Astrew. Hello, Michael. Hello. Good to talk to you, sir. Good to talk to you. All right. Um, you, you wrote a great piece that I am holding in my hand, uh, Weekly Standard, uh, about this uh, whole uh, fiasco. Um, and it's, um, it's just, um, it's horrific. You're also former counsel to, uh, associate counsel to um, uh, the White House and the, in the Reagan administration a a as well. Um, th talk about how this could possibly happen. Well, what happens in large government agencies is you have a culture of non-accountability. And, you know, it gets cozy and people are not held accountable for failure. And that's when you get these really big scandals, you get these really big disasters. And at the VA, uh, they've had uh, a culture of saying the right things at the top and then not forcing change down through the organization. And this particular health care issue, this has been open and notorious for a long time in the agency. And I think the most telling document is a 2010 memo that was broadly circulated by a deputy assistant secretary named Schoenbaum, who had an eight-page list of practices he had identified that were gaming the system and insisted that it stop, but nothing changed. And, I, and that's why you need change not only at the top with the secretary and, you know, the head of the health Undersecretary for Health was leaving anywhere. But the Inspector General, the watchdog was not watching. And now that same inspect, acting Inspector General is going to go in in judgment a lot of these situations, and he has a conflict of interest because he's part of the problem. He should have been screaming bloody murder on behalf of veterans four, five, six years ago. Yeah. And yeah. he was not. Six years, and as you point out, not only that, but uh, the, the whistleblowers had to go to Congress. They, they, right. They, I mean, that's, that's insane. That's how action really happened here. And so, you know, it is, a, it is a breakdown not only on the programmatic side, but it's a breakdown among the watchdogs at the Inspector General. And it is part of a pattern in this administration, regrettably, that they've found ways to make these fellows toothless tigers. And they have not called a single Inspector General to accountable on anything in this entire administration. Um, they didn't do it at HHS when they had the healthcare.gov meltdown. The Inspector General at HHS, his sole contribution was a few weeks before launch, a four-page report that said, well, they tell me everything's fine. Well, you know, that's how the taxpayers and the people that um, these agencies are supposed to be, who are supposed to be served by these agencies, get abused. And it is time for change. It's time for accountability. This administration has not been big on that with its own appointees. And it's time really for that to change. Well, I'm looking at a story here from the Washington Times that the Obama administration received clear notice more than five years ago that VA medical facilities were reporting inaccurate waiting times, experiencing yeah. scheduling failures that threatened to deny veterans timely health care, problems that of course have turned into this uh, scandal. Um, affairs officials warned the Obama-Biden transition team in the weeks after the OA presidential election that the department shouldn't trust the wait times that its uh, fa facilities were reporting. Uh, was, does this go back? Uh, uh, well, obviously, I mean, I don't know who was warning them, but does this go back into the Bush administration? I'm sure it does. The VA has had 
problems managing its health and disability systems for a long, long time. And, and part of it is, you know, it's a Pentagon management theory. You know, it's in, over, but over there, you know, they're not used to getting complaints about the people they serve. They're really not allowed to complain. Um, and so, you know, bad practices get imported from these generals and admirals who generally have the best of intentions, but they really don't know how to manage a complicated healthcare institution or a complicated disability program. And they're, they're satisfied with happy talk and um, bottom line phony numbers, and they also manage by the numbers. I mean, I think it's embarrassing to tie bonuses to a few sol- selective, um, not terribly credible um, data points. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you create perverse incentives when you do that. The data, first of all, has to be right. And it's one of the first things I did in the agency when I went to Social Security was we had a lot of inconsistent data. We weren't collecting data on things that we needed to collect in order to know what was going on. We did a total revamp of all that stuff. But you still don't run the bonuses on automatic pilot, and that's what they did here. That's why the people running the worst hospitals got bonuses on top of everything else. We rewarded the bad behavior. Yeah, right, and that seems to be in the case of where where there was the Legionnaire's disease. uh, uh, The the, the people got rewarded and got bonuses there as well. Uh, Let me ask you, would you be surprised to learn that according to a West Virginia doctor, um, uh, she says that um, uh, that uh, people, uh, uh, veterans on the waiting list, um, committed suicide. At least she knows of at least two uh, uh, of those cases. Would that surprise you? No, suicide is a huge problem with returning um, veterans, and it's something you know. With the son that just returned from Afghanistan, um, I've spent a lot of time talking to him about and thinking about. It's a big problem, and there's nothing like feeling that your health care. Uh, institutions against you that is, you know, it's going to promote that kind of thing. So I don't have any specific knowledge no, about the West yeah. Virginia situation, but could this type of bureaucratic inefficiency push someone over the edge? Absolutely. And, and you write in your piece, um, uh, Michael, that um, you hope that the focus on this doesn't cause everyone to overlook or bypass the other inefficiencies in the VA system with regard to disability and other issues. It's, it's a disgrace. And, you know, they came over, uh, you know, I was commissioner of Social Security for six years. They came over every six to 12 months looking at what we did, how we did it. The younger people always said, oh, yeah, we want a system like this. And then you got, you had the people who were the retired um, senior military people, and they'd look and they say, well, we just don't know how we can do this. This is too hard for us. And it's not that hard, you know, and it's not more expensive um, either, because at the end of the day, they keep hiring pa- people to push the paper. I mean, the VA disability system is a is a small fraction in terms of numbers of people to the Social Security disability system, and they use almost as many people um, to do the first line handling of the disability cases. I mean, they had a facility in Virginia that almost collapsed from the weight of the paper. So, you know, they need to move to a modern electronic system. Now, to be fair to the VA, Some of the veterans groups are fighting that because they're very used to the status quo and they like a very informal system. But at the end of the day, um, if there are 50 different ways you can start a disability claim, those claims are not going to be processed in an efficient way. And we need to get on these claims and get on them as promptly as possible so that veterans can get their benefits, or if they're not getting their benefits, yeah, you, you would think they know would, it and they can move on with their lives. You would think they would standardize it. Let me ask you something. I mean, I haven't heard Social Security talked about in years. Uh, I did my best to make it dull. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, uh, uh, health-wise, how would yeah. you rate, I mean, you, uh, acknowledging you've been out of the, uh, the loop for oh, sure. uh, the system, I should say, for a while, but health-wise, how healthy is Social Security? Well, things don't move that quickly. I've been out a year and a half, so it hasn't changed that much. Okay. So we, we have our heads in the sand um, on Social Security solvency um, as well, because for retirement, it'll be insolvent around 2033. And by insolvent, I mean enable, unable to pay full benefits. Some benefits, but not full benefits. But our disability system, and I you know, screamed 
um, every year at the trustees report, you know, I cornered members of Congress. It's insolvent in 2016. So people on disability wow. yeah. will be taking a deep and real cut in about two years um, if we don't focus on it. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing going on in the, con in, in the Congress. And are there problems? Should there be some things that are tightened up? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, Congress is going to have to make some very hard choices very soon, or a lot of people who don't deserve to suffer so that, really will be. So that's the, that's the U.S. We're, we're out of time, but that's the U.S. disability uh, system, the one that there's so many people on now. I think there are more people have gone on that than have found jobs or something like that. But that's what we're talking about, right? This yeah, and it's regular been disability. And it's been booming because of the baby boom. Right, right. Um, you know, we're in our disability, you know, prone years. Right. Mike, I got to go, but I, a fascinating yeah. conversation. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks Take for care. having me on. My pleasure. Michael Ashtrew, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very interesting. All right, we're coming back with uh, Gimme Five right here on The Steve Malzberg Show.